Hi guys and welcome to another video. This is the first part of a series of videos where we'll look at the best must-have plugins available for Unraid. We'll look at not only installing and configuring them, but also using and getting the most out of each plugin. And in this first part of the series, we'll be looking at the excellent Community Applications family of plugins. So let's get started. <laughs> Right, so in this video, we'll be looking at some of the amazing Community Applications family of plugins by Andrew Zavadsky, aka Squid. So Community Applications, or CA for short, is most commonly known as the plugin that we use to install all the other plugins and Docker containers on the Unraid server. Well, there's actually more to CA than just the Apps tab. CA is actually a suite of plugins. Yes. So CA installs applications, but it can also automatically update the plugins and Docker containers after they've been installed as well. And also to keep us safe, CA can also back things up for us. It can back up our app data folder and even clean and remove app data folders from containers that we've long since deleted. And with VMs, it can automatically back up our XML and libvirt image as well. In fact, CA can even make full backups of your flash drive should you need it to. And there's a lot more too. So let's install each plugin and look at all of its features and how to use them in detail. So first we'll look at the main plugin of CA, the Daddy, which installs all of the rest. Okay, so here we are on a fresh install of Unraid. And you can see here we've got no plugins installed and we've got no Docker containers installed. So the first plugin we need to install is obviously Community Applications. So for that we need to click on to Install Plugin and you'll see here there's a box to put the URL in and then we click install. So to find that URL all we need to do is just to go to the Unraid forums and then scroll down until we come to plugin support and then we click onto that and then we just need to look for the post community applications. This will always be a pin post near the top so just click onto that and then if you want to scroll down a little bit and here you can see the URL. So we're going to copy this URL here and then go back to the server, paste it into the box and click install. Now this will pull down the plugin and the first thing we'll notice now is we've got an apps tab at the top which will allow us to install other programs and docker containers. So let's click onto it and you'll see here a disclaimer so just click onto that to dismiss the warning and here we are in community applications. Okay so let's start with what we can see here. The most obvious thing is the random app of the day so every time we start up community applications, each day we'll see a couple of new random apps that are displayed from all of the apps that community applications has access to. This is a nice feature because we may see something that we wouldn't otherwise look at and think, hey, let's give it a try. This application sounds pretty cool. So other than the random apps of the day, there's two main ways we can search for applications. We can use the search box at the top here. So if we wanted to search for a Plex Docker container, we just type in the name Plex and then we can scroll through all of the different Plex containers that we can see. And to install an application what we need to do is hover over the hard drive icon here and then click to install. Now if it's a Docker container it will bring up the template which we can fill out to install and then click apply but if it's a plugin it will just automatically install the plugin as is. And once it's installed we just click on the done at the bottom here and then that takes us back to community applications. And if we look on our docker tab here, we can see here that Plex is now installed. Now another way to search for applications is to click on the folder icon over here. If we hover over that for a moment, then we can see all the different sections that we've got to install various things. So if I wanted to install another media server, I could click onto media servers here and then here we can see all the pages of the different media server applications and we can scroll through and choose which ones we might want to install. And we can also filter this by subsections as well by clicking onto this icon here. You can see we've got video, music, comic books, photos and other. As well as that we can change the view by clicking on the binoculars and we can put things as in tables. We can have icons with details which is the default 
or just icons on its own. And also we can sort things by repository, downloads and author. Now one really useful feature is the pinning button. You see the little pin button here, the red pin button? If we click on pin this application, you notice that will turn green. Now doing this is a bit like adding them to a shopping cart or a wish list, whereby we can look at them later and install them if we want to. Now this is a great feature when browsing and very useful. So let's pin a few apps now. So let's pin MB, iPlayer and Librasonic. So to get to our pinned applications, we need to click on this briefcase icon here. And you can see here we've got a few sections. We've got available apps, which is what we're on now. We've got installed apps, which is all the apps that we've got installed at the moment. And we've got previous apps for previously installed apps. And here we've got pinned apps. So let's click on to pinned apps. And here are the things that I've pinned that I want to either look at or install. And to install them, as before, we click onto the hard drive icon. Now there's one thing here, is that after we've installed it, when we click done, it brings us back to the main page of community applications. So to get back to our pinned apps, we have to again click on briefcase, and then pinned applications. And you can see now we're back here, that this container is still listed as a pinned app. So it isn't actually removed once you've installed it. And we can see it's installed because now, as well as the install icon, we've also got an icon to edit the application values. And we've got an icon to go to the app's UI. So now because we've installed this, we can just unpin the app. And then when we come back to our pinned apps, it's no longer there. So in the pinned app section, we can just go through and install all of the containers that we want to. OK, next we'll look at installed apps. And here we can see all the apps that are installed on the system. And from here we can either reinstall the app should we need to. We can edit the template. And we can actually uninstall apps from here as well. So to uninstall an app, we just click onto the red cross here. And then click yes uninstall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uninstall a few apps from here. Obviously not community applications. And so now let's click on the briefcase icon. And now because I've uninstalled some apps, I'm going to have some previous apps available. Here are all the previous apps that we've had on the system. And if I want to install them again, I can just click here to reinstall. And when we use community applications to install an app that we've previously had on the server, it will even fill the template in just as it was before and we don't have to fill it in again, which really saves time doing reinstalls. And this is particularly useful if for any reason you ever have to recreate your Docker image, you can just go to Community Applications and then go to the list of all the previous apps that you've had and just reinstall each one quickly without having to fill in templates or anything else like that. Now let's have a look at some advanced searching features that we can do with CA. I'm going to look for a container called Portainer and we can see nothing's found. But what we can do is we can enable Docker Hub searching as well. And so to do that, we click on the settings button at the top here, and then we have to enable additional search results from Docker Hub. So let's click that to yes, and click apply. And now let's do the same search again. And again, it says there's no matching content, but this time we've got an icon to actually search from Docker Hub. So let's click onto that. And now we've got a list of containers displayed from Docker Hub. And if we click on the icon here, it will take us to the corresponding page on Docker Hub. And we can read about the container here. But if we want to install it, we just click on to add. Then Community Applications will convert this Docker file into a template that's compatible with Unraid. Now please remember that this is an advanced feature, and often you'll have to add your own parameters into the template yourself which is beyond the scope of this video, so this isn't for the beginner. But just as before, it will pull down the container and install it onto your server. And if we go to our Docker tab, we can see that the container is installed here. OK, so that's how you do Docker Hub searching. So now let's install some more plugins from Community Application Suite. I'm going to search for CA, 
and now I'm going to click on the author's name here on the first CA application just so it lists all of his plugins. And the ones I'm going to install for this tutorial is the Backup and Restore, the App Data Cleanup, the Auto Update, and finally the CA Fix Common Problems. Now if you notice here that every time we've installed a plugin and we click done it goes back to the page where the plugins are. It doesn't actually reset back to the beginning of community applications like it does when we install a docker container. Which will always bring us back to this page here. Now this isn't a fault of community applications, it's just the difference between how the plugins and the docker engine works with what happens after either a plugin or docker container is installed. But if you don't like the fact that community applications reloads after you've installed a docker then there's one little tip I can show you. For example, if we're browsing the downloaders section of community applications, what we can do, we can scroll through and then if we actually hover over the icon and instead of left clicking it, if we right click and then click open link in new tab, we can then fill in the template and install the container. And then once it's installed, we can just close the tab and we're back where we were on the search. So then we can go down and maybe install the next one in the same way. So it's quite useful if you've got a few containers in the same section that you might want to install. It saves having to do the search all over again. So that's how the main Community Applications plugin works. So now let's look at the other CA plugins that we just downloaded a moment ago. And we'll start with the Auto Update Applications plugin here. So just click onto the icon and what this plugin does is automatically update our Docker containers and our plugins. And there are sections where we configure the update settings separately for plugins and docker containers here. The settings are really self-explanatory, things such as having notifications on updates. And you can set here to have all the plugins update automatically. Or if you have that set to no, you can choose specific plugins which you want to have done. I personally like to leave mine just set on all of them. And here you can set the update frequency from daily, weekly and monthly and a custom schedule. I like to leave mine on daily and if we go to the docker auto update settings this is pretty much exactly the same you can either update all of your containers or just selected ones and you can set the frequency for update here as well okay so now let's next look at the backup and restore app data plugin um, first we'll see a warning here which basically just warns us that for app data to be backed up it will have to stop and then restart all of our running docker containers. So let's just click on OK. Now the first thing we need to do is to set where our app data share is. So for that we just click into this box here and the app data should always be in the cache drive. So click on cache and then app data. And now the destination share, this is where the plugin will back up the app data folder to. By default it's set for the user shares then community applications app data backup. I'm actually going to make a separate share myself for this. So I was going to click onto shares and then click open a new tab. And I was going to add a share. I'm just going to call it backups. And now having created that share, I'm now going to create three folders inside there. And the first one is going to be called app data backup. The second one's going to be called flash drive backup. And the third one's going to be called libvert backup. Okay, so with those created, let's go back to our settings and choose our destination share. So now I'm going to browse through to user and backups, and then I'm going to choose the app data folder I created. So now all of my app data backups are going to go to here. Now next, if we want to, we can exclude certain folders within the app data that we may not want to have backed up. And if you wanted to do that, you just go through the list here and if I didn't want to have MB server backed up for instance I'll just tick this and then select exclude selected and then you can see it puts it into here but I want all of my app data backed up so I'm going to uncheck this and then click this button again and now we can also use compression on our backups which will save us roughly about 50% in size so I'm going to select yes for this and also we can have it verify backups or not verify backups I'm going to leave this on yes now here, this is the location where if we want to have our flash drive backed up as well, we should select that. 
So I'm going to go to the share that I just created and use the folder flash drive backup. And the same here for our libvert image. And for those of you who don't know what a libvert image is, that contains all of your VM XML files and other useful things when you create your VMs. So it's very important to keep that backed up. So again, let's click to select the destination and I'm going to go to the same share and this time my libvert backup folder here. And here we can choose the notification settings. By default it's set on errors only, but I want to have mine on completed only so I know when it's been completed. And the next two things here we have custom scripts that we can have run at the start and the completion of the backup. I'm going to leave that blank and if you've installed the last plug in the CA auto updates we can have it auto update after a backup so I'm going to select yes for that as well. And time to wait when stopping an app before killing. Leave that for 60 seconds unless you find your apps aren't stopping in time. And now here we can set up the backup frequency. We can leave it disabled if we want to just run the backups manually. But I want to have mine back up every week, so I'm going to select weekly. And now we can choose a day of the week. I'm going to have mine on a Sunday night, I think, about 1 o'clock in the morning. OK, so now let's click on apply. And this is just warning us that anything in the destination folders may be overwritten. So make sure you don't have any other data in there. OK, so now we can back up now if we want to. So let's run a backup quickly. And we can see the backup and restore is running. And now let's look at the backup status. And we can now see that the backup of the app date is complete. So now what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to delete my whole app data folder now so we can do a restore. And I'm going to do this by command line through the terminal which is now built into the web UI of the latest Unraid RC. OK, so now I've just deleted the app data share. So now you can see the app date is gone. So now I'm going to create a new share. And now I'm going to go back to the plugin. And I'm going to click on Restore App Data. And we can see here the backup I want to restore. Now if you had more than one backup, there would be more than one backup in here. So then you just click on to restore. And this message is just confirming where we're restoring the app data from and to. And again, we can see the backup and restores running. So let's click on the status again. And the restore of app data is complete. So let's go to the shares and let's have a look at the app data folder now. And you can see in here, here's all my app data back as it was. OK, so let's move on to the next CA plugin, the cleanup app data plugin. Now what this plugin does is it checks our app data folder to see if there's orphaned app data folders present. And you can see here there's two here that I have. So I'm going to select both of these and click delete selected. So this is really useful if you've uninstalled various containers and it's left app data behind. It's really easy to clean it up. So let's click on to done. OK, and back to plugins again. OK, and so the last plugin we'll look at is fix common problems. Well, there's not a lot to say about this because it does exactly what it says on the tin. It finds common problems and suggests fixes for them. So let's click onto the icon and then it will start scanning the system. And on my server it's found no errors but it has given me a warning because I have an SSD drive it recommends that I install the Dynamics Trim plugin. So let's just fix that. Now let's go back to fix common problems and we'll rescan. And now everything on my server is fine. So this is a really useful plugin that can find common problems and give you suggested fixes. Well, so that's the end of the first part of Must Have Unraid Plugins, where we looked at the community application suite. Well, the next part of the video will be out soon, where we'll be looking at other great Unraid plugins as well. Well, until then, that's the end of the video, and I really hope you liked it and found it useful. If you did, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. If you really like what I'm doing, then any donations are really appreciated, which you can do from the links in the description or on the channel homepage. Anyway guys, wishing you all a great new year in 2018, and I'll catch you all next time.